Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So I've got the Bitcoin chart up here on the daily, and you guys can see Bitcoin starting to move higher slowly, but surely yesterday we were trading in around 54,300, and uh, you guys can see that trend slowly moving up. We are uh, up about $1,000 per BTC. So today, as of the time of this recording, guys, we are trading in and around 55000 300 per BTC. Bulls are grasping for, uh, you know, anything they can kind of really get at this point. I still do think that, uh, you know, ultimately September is uh, going to be looking bearish just based on uh, historical charts and previous projections. September usually does follow a bearish pattern. And even this trend to the upside, you guys can see three uh, daily green candlesticks in a row, but they are following an engulfing red candlestick here with a lot of negative selling pressure. So, I mean, don't want to sound fuddy, but I don't think that this trend is going to continue uh, much higher to the upside. I do think we could still be in for some more downward pressure. Now, I mean, if we go below 49,000, that is still up for debate. We do have this floor here that, uh, you know, we really should be paying attention to if it does come down to that. Luckily, the crypto sector is feeling a little more positive today, guys. We're back into neutral territory at 41. You guys can see market cap has gone up two by 1.31%, up to $1.96 trillion. So we're slowly climbing back to that $2 trillion mark. 24-hour uh, volume, guys, that is up too. So we have seen increased buying pressure, 32.65%. Bitcoin dominance, though, uh, still hanging out at about 55.7. So the money is going into Bitcoin, but guys, it's also going into altcoins. Bitcoin is up within the last 24 hours, 1.29%. We've seen, uh, well, some of the altcoins gaining steam as well. Some uh, big traders today, Toncoin up 6.7% uh, in, the, in the top 10. We've seen uh, AVAX, that's up 454 uh, Chainlink is up 5.2%. So, uh, you know, the altcoin market doing its thing mostly in the green, albeit there are still some altcoins in the red. Right now, XRP is trading in and around 53 cents. That is up uh, only 0.28% since yesterday. So uh, let's just bring up the XRP chart here, guys. You guys can see that trend looking very, very similar to what Bitcoin has been doing. So pretty much the same overall picture as we've been uh, witnessing for the crypto market over the last few months. But guys, it is getting better. Here's some statistics from ISO 20022. Let's do it, okay? This is cryptocurrency adoption. Now, the adoption is really what's going to propel this market forward into 2025, and it could be that we see a different type of bull run than we have seen in the past. You know, in the past, we haven't, um, we were never in a, uh, in a climate where, Cryptocurrency adoption was a reality, but considering, uh, you know, in 2024 and uh, more importantly into 2025, we do have uh, time limits for ISO 2022 adoption, for example, and other things that are crypto related. So guys, this could be a sign that crypto adoption is really going to bring certain cryptocurrencies up with it. So he posts this, okay, the global adoption of crypto has skyrocketed and will continue to accelerate in 2024. Well, we only have a few months left of 2024. And here are just some of the, uh, the countries here. So India, that has increased 6.55%. Absolute number of crypto owners, 93.5 million. You guys can see China is also accelerating their owners uh, in terms of uh, the percentage of the population. That is up 4.15%, guys. That is uh, a 59.1 million uh, person increase. The United States up 15.5% roughly, and that is about 52.9 million. So very, very close to China's numbers. Brazil is up 12% too. That is 26 million. Uh, some of these other countries, single digits here. Vietnam is up double digits, 21.2%. Uh, what else do we have here? Philippines, they are up 13.4%. So we can see a trend here, guys. In 2024, investors are realizing, oh, wait a minute, we should be investing in cryptocurrency. And ultimately, I mean, if you're savvy enough and you've been looking at the charts, I mean, I know you and I are already realizing this, but uh, if you are one of those investors, you are realizing there is a big opportunity here in 2025. So this is the total market cap. And uh, from 20, let's call it the end of 2022 into 2023, and the majority of 2024 guys has seen that remarkable uptick. Uh, and now it is that reaccumulation phase, right? The downturn, the correction after that euphoric first phase of the bull run. But this is what we have to look forward to next. Rec Capital here, bringing this to our attention. This Bitcoin cheat sheet will help you survive this crash. It's great though that uh, many people in different countries have not even been phased by this crash. Watch this. 
gonna focus on the specific phases that we see in Bitcoin's market cycle starting from bearish is a downtrending phase where we see price downtrend for a year. Generally speaking, the pre-bull phase is the pre-halving year where we see lots of consolidation within narrower ranges or wider ranges. But in a first bull phase, this is the halving year where we tend to see finally some sort of recovery in price action towards the upside, but it really does get a bit more impressive in the parabolic phase of the cycle, which is the second bull phase in this chart. So in 2017, you can see that this really does take off in a parabolic fashion comparing 2017 to 2016. It's during the second bull phase, the post halving year really, where we see a bull market peak take place and also the parabolic price action but definitely we will be transitioning and ultimately see price top out in 2025. I'm really digging these Rekt Capital uh, little one minute shorts that he's putting out. Uh, you guys can follow him over there on YouTube. Uh, I will link this in the description of the video for you guys if you're interested. A great little cheat sheet here to, uh, to show you guys that 2025 is going to be that post having year, that second bull run phase, the second to what we've uh, you know just witnessed here during 2023 and into 2024, really. Guys, a lot of analysts are saying this is just a cool down period, so we should buckle up and be ready. For more information on what I'm trading, you can follow me at patreon.com slash working money channel because this time the bull run is likely to look very different than former bull runs. And uh, you know I've learned a lot during the last two bull runs and I'm bringing a brand new strategy this time around. Anyway, for more information on that, patreon.com slash working money channel. Guys, Eleanor Turret here posting this. She just found this out. Senator Schumer sent a letter to his Senate colleagues where he mentioned priorities for passing bipartisan legislation in the remaining months of Congress. Cryptocurrency legislation was not mentioned, but artificial intelligence was. This, despite the adamance in the Crypto for Harris Town Hall that crypto legislation was going to be a pressing priority. Well, 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 look at what we have here. Uh, Valix, uh, King Valix down here, he did mention that uh, Chuck Schumer apparently already did say that uh, that there was going to be uh, a passing crypto legislation this year. And he did just uh, post this video back from August the 15th. I'm not going to play you guys this clip, but I will link uh, this tweet thread in the description for you guys so you can find it from there. But this is interesting because, um, you know, now they're not, uh, they're not, outlining it specifically, even if he did say it two weeks ago or th three weeks ago, four weeks ago, whatever it is in the land of politics, that is like eons ago. Uh, Johnny King here uh, saying this, okay, anyone who thinks Kamala is crypto friendly deserves to stay poor. She literally hasn't said a word about it. Her colleagues are irrelevant. We see the war in crypto continuing with the recent SEC case against OpenSea. So do not be fooled. Even Meta Lawman coming out saying breaking Kamala Harris has just posted her policy positions on the website. Uh, and there is no mention of digital assets, crypto or blockchain technology anywhere. So now we know. And so uh, here is her uh, policy page. You guys can see here uh, some of the policies include uh, cutting tax for the middle class, making rent more affordable, growing small businesses, take on bad actors, strengthening and bringing down costs of health care, protecting and strengthening Social Security and Medicare, support American innovation and workers, um, provide a path to the middle class through quality and affordable education, invest in affordable child care and lower energy costs. So uh, we do not see any kinds of policies here with regards to uh, cryptocurrency, blockchain, uh, although we are seeing that uh, apparently Chuck Schumer is uh, going to be talking about artificial intelligence, or rather the legislation has been mentioned here, uh, as Eleanor Turret put it, the artificial intelligence legislation, which could kind of find a way into the blockchain crypto space. Nevertheless, nothing concrete. Uh, Chip down here saying, you know, but, but, but the left crypto bros swore she would pivot fully and embrace cryptocurrency. Well, apparently not. Anyway, uh, I will leave that up for you to decide who you vote for this November. And uh, the uh, the first debate, I guess, between Kamala Harris and uh, Donald Trump is going to be happening tomorrow, Tuesday, September the 10th. Uh, I just realized that. Looking forward to that one. Smoke here, guys, bringing this to our attention. So here's a Russian document that was just published a few months ago, confirming that the value of the BRICS unit currency will be made up of 40% gold and 60% fiat. So uh, you guys, uh, I, I know I've talked about this. BRICS is coming up with their own currency and we were speculating, uh, what, how is this currency going to look and uh, what was it, how is it going to be made up? Well, now guys, apparently it has been solidified. 40% gold, 60% fiat, an interesting mix here. Uh, Smoke also did point this out, guys. The same chart 
also included Ripple, where it was described as having a significant dependence on the IMF. Ripple's audience, central banks and banks, certainly not retail. There's a reason why Ripple is documented so closely to the BRICS cryptocurrency. And uh, now I'm starting to see why. So in this same document, guys, in this same PDF, we are seeing uh, Russia discuss the, uh, you know, the concept of the BRICS currency and how that is going to be made up, what uh, or how rather it's going to be represented. So 40% gold, and I'm guessing a basket of fiat currencies will make up the remaining 60%. But in this same document, they do talk about Ripple and the fact that this particular company is uh, going to be a very integral role in servicing uh, banks around the world. So central bank integration banks and central banks are their uh, are their audience, according to this Russian paper here. So that is a uh, very interesting and very telling. Obviously, Ripple is going to play an integral role, as I did just mention, in transferring a lot of this uh, BRICS value. And now that they are going to be, uh, you know, making up a new currency uh, and it's likely going to be a cryptocurrency, uh, we are likely going to see Ripple leverage XRP to do just this. So that was some great news. Wanted to thank Smoke for pointing that out. Uh, there was also this, guys, Ripple Payment Connects Domestic Instant Payment Systems Internationally. So there is another point here that I wanted to make this concept of, uh, you know, starting domestically and then moving into international payments. When we heard of, uh, you know, FedNow as, uh, as one big example, uh, it was leveraging Ripple technology through Valente, but then there were many critics saying, you know, FedNow does domestic payments. You're not going to need XRP for domestic payments. Well, guys, Smoke has just debunked that. I mean, um, well, I mean, I guess technically it was right, but if we look at what this uh, paper says here, Ripple is a private instant payments uh, system, an IPS, and Ripple's IPS is designed to directly connect financial institutions, banks, and payment service providers. In addition, the underlying neutral interledger protocol allows for bridging different domestic IPS infrastructure. So this is uh, Ripple Payments. Okay, that was rebranded in uh, in 2023, late 2023. We make the connectors agnostic of the overlay network. Moreover, we can easily attach any app at the end tunnel. So giving us uh, just a bit of a, a look under the hood here. And then uh, take a look at these countries, guys. The global heat map for real-time payments. These are the countries that are already integrated that can, in fact, accept real-time payments. And Anders here also commenting, yep, exactly. There's a video somewhere, I think, where Chris Larson from many years ago uh, where he's talking about connecting different IPSs and then having a large bank in each country, which can then forward a payment into the uh, to, into any bank account in that country because of the IPS, since it is a domestic payment. So then you would only need to partner with large banks in each country with an IPS to have full payout coverage in that country. I never found that video again, and that bothers me. Uh, so I guess if uh, if anybody does come across that video, do tag Anders because he has been looking for that video for a while. But just goes to show you guys that, uh, you know, the domestic payments, this was, uh, and, and I, this I think was an older document, the domestic payments, obviously that first step. But now, guys, we are seeing more integration, obviously, with these central banks since Ripple has been uh, continuously partnering up with central banks around the world. It is becoming more and more apparent that these partnerships will flourish. So wanted to thank Smoke for posting that. Uh, Michael Branch here, guys, bringing us this news coming from the VeChain camp. VeChain, another one of those cryptocurrencies in my $15,000 plus portfolio that you guys can find over there at patreon.com slash working money channel. So here's some more news. Apparently, VeChain is being integrated at a large scale. According to the latest report by VeChain shared by blockchain researcher Colin Brown, that is now available for payments on iOS via the leading mobile app Ubit. Or Ubit. Uh, this implies that crypto holders can simply tap and pay using the asset in more than 100 million retailers worldwide. That is a huge amount of retailers. Uh, are you sure it's 100 million or 100,000? Uh, fascinating, these forms um, uh, fascinating, excuse me, this forms part of the uh, recent partnership agreement between Ubit and VeChain to integrate VET into its platform. So uh, some more great news here, VET integrating into the Ubit platform, which is uh, getting this cryptocurrency out to way more people globally. Again, guys, it's going to be about the integration into these new financial systems. And, you know, you will eventually see a lot of these uh, real world utility coins start to flourish. And uh, I'm wondering if we're going to see this in 2025, if we do in fact see that real world utility kick in at that point. A lot of speculation has been surrounding uh, utility coins like XRP and even Cointelegraph. I mean, we don't usually see this from news outlets, but they're even coming out suggesting XRP is being set up to rally towards $1. And they even break it down here in this tweet thread. XRP has underperformed the broader crypto market in 2024, declining over 15% year to date, while other assets gained around 20%. However, technical indicators point to potential for a major rebound. 
as you guys can see on the weekly chart, we can see that inverted head and shoulders pattern here. Uh, and you guys can see that neckline coming right down in here. What they are suggesting supporting this bullish case. The key level to watch is that neckline uh, at around 65 to 66 cents. If we break out above this, then they are suggesting XRP could go anywhere between 90, uh, 90 cents and $1. Supporting the bullish case, XRP trading above the 50-week moving average and the 200-week uh, moving averages. A decisive rally above these levels would strengthen the breakout narrative. So we're looking at the uh, the daily moving averages. We're we're looking at that neckline, and we are obviously uh, here still looking at that uh, that setup here, the inverted head and shoulders pattern. They also discussed the uh, symmetrical triangular pattern narrative that uh, you know I even talked about in yesterday's video. Which uh, if you guys didn't catch, I will link it up here in the top right hand corner. Uh, you know the potential for an XRP to go anywhere between fifty dollars and fifty eight dollars per coin. I mean that is the the overall, I think, extremely optimistic outlook for XRP. I mean, there is historical data to support that it could do that again, whether it will or not, I mean, is anybody's guess. But here is the thing that I think, uh, you know, a lot of people aren't considering during this bull run, which has not been a uh, has not been a reality in former bull runs. We did not see this in 2021. We did not see this in 2017. And that, guys, is the real world utility. That is a bit of a wild card because it is going to depend on, uh, well, politicians for one, but so many other factors as well. Michael Branch bringing this to our attention. Experts say XRP won't just experience a bull run, but a perpetual growth cycle. So this came uh, this came from Edward Farina. OK, according to Ido Farina, a crypto enthusiast and head of social adoption at XRP Healthcare, the XRPL native token could see a perpetual cycle for context. A perpetual cycle insinuates an upending upward trajectory for XRP price. And guys, here's what Ido Farina had to say at Istanbul Blockchain Week. Listen to this. I'm very excited for that. Like what they say, you know, when the market is a little bit, you know, sideways, just zoom out, right? Yeah, zoom out. That's the time to accumulate. That's the time to purchase at low levels. I know Bitcoin is still quite not far away from the all-time high, but you have all the other coins, which they really didn't take off as much. So I think you can still get, it's not financial advice, but you can still purchase a lot of tokens at discounted levels. And we're talking about tokens that have real world utility tokens that are like a 20x less expensive than the previous all time high. And we're just getting started. So I think it's a great moment for accumulation. Do some DCA. Don't deploy all the capital at once, but slowly increment your bags. And I think you can make a lot of money in the future. So you're saying we are still about to experience the biggest out season coming in our horizon. I would say the greatest bull run of all times and I would say that I don't think we're going to have the same opportunity looking back, maybe not even our children are going to have such a great opportunity. As I said, I do believe that's going to be a perpetual bull run, but that's not going to happen overnight, still have some time and that's why now it's important to build the foundations to understand a bit more. If you are looking to join Web 3.0, you have to do your own research, you have to learn about technology, see what's trending, learn about decentralization so that you can position yourself on the greatest assets. Ido Farina here mentioning this perpetual bull run, but of course, guys, he doesn't mean for every single cryptocurrency. He means for the utility coins, the coins that are going to transform this system, coins like XRP, and XRP is not the only one, guys. There are several different cryptocurrencies here that fall into that category. VeChain is another one of those cryptocurrencies. And this is why, I mean, I started the Patreon. I have changed up my strategy. Not all my cryptocurrencies are utility coins. However, if utility coins do see that perpetual bull run instead of, uh, you know, in the past where we saw XRP do this kind of thing, just kind of meander up and then see a huge spike to the upside and then correct significantly before another slow move to the upside, another spike, so on and so forth. What we could in fact see instead, guys, is this slow move to the upside where we see this perpetual bull run continue, the euphoria continue, XRP reaching new heights, and that is ultimately going to depend on the utility we see for XRP. So don't be left behind. Make sure you are down cost averaging. Make sure you are purchasing cryptocurrencies that make sense for you and your portfolio. But that's just my opinion. I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.